Okay. Hello, folks. Hola. Um, well, tonight we're looking at an interesting beer that's been around since 1948. What? I think it's 48, if I remember right. Uh, let's see. I have the website right here. Um, uh, well, by well, yeah, at yeah, minimum, yeah, yeah, 1948, and um, at minimum, Chimay has been brewing since 1862. Okay, but what? I know, but we're looking at the red cap tonight, the premier. Now, mine says, see, mine says premier. Now, Eric has an older bottle that says ale. Yeah, that's the older bottle. I don't think we have to worry about age too much on these. And then Marie has the most modern label that just came out, I guess, a few months ago. Oh, well, uh, that's on the 750-milliliter bottle. That's right. Uh, okay, here's the story. Well, first we'll introduce who we have tonight. John couldn't join us. John did not, but we're glad for who did join us. We appreciate it. I mean, I appreciate it, and I guess you we'll, would. we'll enjoy the beer. We had fun with the last Chimay beer. Oh yeah. So yeah. now I guess we'll have to do the white, huh? And then, and then the Dory, the go. Okay. From the south is myself, Louisiana Beer Reviews, Ronald Terry OJ. From the west we have Eric Anderson. Cheers. And uh, he doesn't do his own beer reviews or liquor reviews, but he does join us. From the northeast, the mid-Atlantic states, up in the mountain Finger Lakes region of New York State, we have Maria Devon, the girl next door, who does. Give us a kiss. Who does? She's been drinking already off of this beer. Now, she had it with dinner. Now, um, I did. I had to make sure it would go with my dinner she so said, I could tell you a food pairing. Wait. Ooh, and she said on Facebook, I can't I can't wait to drink this beer. Okay, and uh she's does her own video reviews. Y'all should watch us. And there's Massachusetts Beer Reviews, Thomas Metal, Eric from Hello, sir, and everybody out there. Now you have the small bottle, and I have the small bottle, and Eric has the small bottle. Maria has the big boy. Wait. I think mine was like four ninety nine. Yeah, they're yeah, they're about the same price range in New England. Okay, here's the story I was talking about. 1862, the Trappist monks at the Notre Dame de Scormont Abbey in Chimay, Belgium, which is right close to the French border, started brewing beer. But they just brewed it. You know, it wasn't like an operation that was done for money. Then they started saying, well, let's raise money. So they, in eight, 1948, one of the monks isolated the yeast and they started making the Chimay Premier. Then later on, they introduced the Christmas Special, which became the Grand Reserve. And then later on, they came out with the white, you know, the Turpel. Mm -hmm. And the last few years, they started selling the Dory, the gold, which is what the monks drink. They, it's, a, it's a low alcohol, like 4.5% ale, but it's a wonderful beer. And you can see that they're sipping on that thing all day. Now, also from the south, we have Jean-Pierre. Hey, I didn't think you were going to be able to join us, but he's Hell here. Yeah. Nice to see you. I made it. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I made it. It was a small little matter, but everything's okay now. And look at this man with this big bottle. Yay. <laughs> now, they, uh, the beer has the fleur de lis on it, on the label. Um, it also has the word Trappist on the label. Yes, and Trappist monks, that order of monks, Cistercian monks, started in La Trappe, France, and they're all over the world. I was reading about this, and they're very strict. So, like, they live a very strict, cloistered existence. They're shut off from the world. It's basically prayer and a very aesthetic, right, type yeah. living. So, if you're not into praying all day and wearing sandals and and drinking good beer. <laughs> good beer, like all the time, then that wouldn't work for you. All right, um, so they say tip the glass at a 45-degree angle. I get these comments every couple of days. You don't know how to pour beer, even though I'll be pouring a beer straight in, and the brewer will say pour it straight in. But this brewer says angle it. It's okay, so you angle it. It should be by the brewer's recommendation to get the best experience out of it entirely. 
I got a lot of foam in my beer. A lot. Yeah. Oh, Gene. <laughs> oh my God! Wow. Yeah. yeah. I'm using a I'm using a glass that has a little bit more of a narrowed, um, you know, tulip to it, so it has a little bit more head than it probably should. But I am noticing overall that I'm getting a lot of streams of carbonation in this beer. A lot of streams of carbonation. Uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, bottle condition, I would think, right? Yeah. I, th I believe so. Very bubbly, and it's seven percent. Now, some of the bottles say Brun Brown. Mine says Beer Ale. Yep, that's what mine says. Premier, uh, bottle by Beers de Chimay, Belgium, seven percent up. Premier mm -hmm. Ale. By the way, if you didn't know, is the common word for double. So if you see a, a beer that says it's Brun, that's usually what it means, or right. it's always what it means. A double. Brewed yeah. Scarmer Abbey bottled in beer of the Chimay. It says Chimay secondary fermented ales have neither been pasteurized nor filtered, and only natural ingredients are used. Uh, Serve slightly chilled in a wide mouth glass. Good, good, good. Contains barley. Okay. Here finally. Hey. Oh, Marilyn J. Now I hope Dude, Marilyn. J. I got it. Good. Nice. Now they said uh, they say here that um, I'm gonna stop talking. They say that they get pouring instructions, which I appreciate, but they're in French. But you can make it out. I did translate them from on Google into English, and they basically say tilt the glass at a 45 degree angle. Use uh, use gently until half bottle. Straighten the glass, and then the last centimeter you want to swirl the bottle to um, break up the yeast. Yeah, now it says. And it does make a oh, point on the back of the glass to remind yeah. you: do not store this bottle on its side. Yeah. Oh. And they also say. That's what happened to me. And they also say beer, of course, can be served with with its yeast. This is quite edible, if you like. So the yeast isn't going to do anything, you know, negative. Better want it, you can have it. I bet it would make amazing beer bread. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, just... Let me interrupt. It says it's coppery. Let's just think about these descriptors and see if it matches up when we start drinking it, which we're doing now. It's coppery color and sweet, fruity taste make this a particularly delightful brown beer. Okay. On with this show. All now, right. Marilyn, I bet y'all can't guess what state Marilyn Jake is from. Uh, Maryland. Hey. Um, <laughs> well, Maria, I think we don't have to spend too much time with everybody. But uh, welcome, Mar uh, Marilyn, Jake, and, and Jean, and everybody. Maria, you give us a description of the appearance. I think we'll all pretty much just conceive what it's going to be. <laughs> okay. Well, this is a beautiful looking beer. Copper is the right word for that that reddish um, almost reddish hue that you see this is what I like to call uh, hazy honey orange uh, there's a there's a big chill haze on it right now but that'll drop off to almost uh, clarity as the beer warms it had a very fat as you can see bubbly sudsy head from what everyone poured of what you would call beige or or just off off white foam stream of effervescence coming up from the center and because it's so softly hazy, it will give a beautiful glow if you hold it up to the right light. It does glow, Maria. And what's the color of the foam? Like cream color? I was going to say a crew, and then I got stuck on tan and beige. I can't decide if it's between a crew and beige. It's, it's, a, little, it's a little tannish. Yeah, maybe khaki is a good word for it. How about bone yeah, color? Yeah, khaki. Khaki to bone colored, sure. Um, okay, Marilyn, Jake, and then back to Maria. Give us the, uh, what do you think about the aroma? Um, oh, oh, has anyone not ever had this beer before? It's, I've got a lot of foam. But I get... Wait. I've not... never had this one. I've... Okay, so Marilyn, Jake's never had it. Maria, you've had it, huh? I've had it once. Jean, Jean, you've never had it? 
Never had it. Only then, of course, the last Chimay beer that we had was the blue, which was, I think, uh, which we'll talk about that later. Okay, and Eric, you've had it. Yes. I've had it, I think, maybe one time before. Okay, so, okay back to uh, Marilyn Jake. I just wanted to get an idea of who'd never had it. Okay. Go. Well, I got so much foam on it that it's, uh, I don't, it definitely has a roasted smell to me, almost like a stout. I would say, like, I can definitely smell roasted malt in it. Huh. I, I smell that more than any type of fruit. It was like, yeah, a roasty smell. But I don't know if that's off or what. I don't think I got a bad, like, this is my first time having it ever, so. It's always best to just describe what you're picking up. Yep. Instead of trying to describe what you think you should be saying. Bad practice. Just say keeps, what you think. Keeps you honest, right? Yeah, I mean, it's like... I would say sweet roast malt. That's what I smell. Okay. Now, uh, Maria, I'm just... It's gonna... almost reminds me of McGinn's. You Make Maria go last, because... Yeah, because I smell a ton of things. Y'all go first. <laughs> I smell lots of stuff. Y'all go first. I, I'll go real fast, and um, I'll be succinct. Okay, uh... I'm picking up candy, like a, a toffee-like candy. Uh, maybe those Werther's, uh, but the uh, more caramel ones, not the light ones. And uh, maybe a little nougat and uh, dried fruit. It It's malt, but it's like lightly to medium roasted. This is not dark roasted. Yeah. Now, the Guinness has a darker roast that yeah. you start to taste it. It's almost like a char. Unless you're drinking the Guinness Blonde. No, that's more. Okay, now, so, yeah, and it's malt, you know, and mm -hmm. not alcohol, though. I'm telling you, this thing is, like, so exceptional. Now, Jean, Jean. Yes. Well, I'm. Connection. Yes. Um. I'm getting more, you said toffee, I was thinking more butterscotch, uh, more, you know, more of that scent I'm getting, and like you said, very much candy-like, butterscotch type of thing, and it's yeah. not too, yes, it's sweet, but again, not overly sweet, which is making this very enjoyable. Now, the last Chimay we had, I thought that was excellent. The blue? The Grand I thought, Reserve. Grand Reserve. That was sensational, and uh, with this one, I can see why... The 10.99 that I paid for this was kind of worth it. I mean, it's really, really, really is a quite you know enjoyable. You're right. Definitely, what I'm getting, if I may add to that, definitely what I'm getting, and and I did a, a beer of get review in 2014 on this beer, and I'm feeling around the same now. I'm getting, I'm getting that. Belgian funky kind of a barnyardy yeast strain. I am getting that. I do get almost a woody kind of a note. I, and I also notice some kind of a red grape or a dark kind of a fruit quality, a slight bready note, and there is some sweetness and a little bit, to me at least, just a tiny bit of that alcohol note coming through. But to me, if you like Belgian beers and you like dark, you know, dark fruit kind of based, you know, smelling beers, then you will like the way that this is coming off so far. What about you, Eric, from Cal? They do add sugar to this, correct? I think so. I, I definitely, like I said, to me, it smells very much like fruitcake. Like, very, very close to fruitcake. Yes, yes. I didn't want to say it because I saw you wrote it, and I didn't want to steal your thunder. But, um, yeah, it's... um. Definitely notes of like a uh, like brown sugar, um, dates, raisins, like darker, almost like dried fruit kind of smell. Um, it, the alcohol, it in the smell is you can just I, I think it's detectable but not overpowering and um, all the taste is different. It's not it's not, the alcohol is also very very slight in the taste as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it's 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 definitely malty. Like you guys said, it's not um, overly roasted. It's like a slight roast. 
It's um, very like gentle, but the malts are definitely very upfront. Like you get that bready note right off the bat, but it's uh, it's it's funny because the same thing with the taste. Uh, even though it smells, you smell the sweetness, you smell the sugar. Is not overpowering. The taste is not cloying. I know I was only supposed to be talking about smell, but right. That's <laughs> You got carried away, man. Now, mm. we have Bryson joining us. Awesomeness. Hello, mm. Bryson. Bryson from yes. Minnesota, right? Yep. Hey, Bryson, you've had this before? Uh, actually, I've not had any uh, from this line. Or from wow. this, I haven't had any of the Chimay's. So this is in yeah introduction for me into uh, this line. Awesome. Tell us what you think about it. You bought the big bottle, too, huh? Yeah, I had to. Uh, from the store I work at. Uh, uh, for my second job, but um, right off the bat, like I know we were talking about taste. No, um, we're talking about smell. Aromas? Aromas? Yeah, the aroma. This aroma, okay. Um, I get, you know, like I'm sure it's already been said uh, because I missed the beginning, but that sweet, malty, um, that brown sugar, like he was mentioning earlier. I, I just. Uh, I just started smelling this beer. I just opened it up recently, so it's just kind of it's still very new to me at this point. Don't feel funny about it. Yeah, that is the aroma. There's, it's just absolutely, uh, it's a delight to smell. That's for sure. Mm-hmm. Sweet, malty, uh, roastiness, kind of, but not too much. It's very balanced. It's very, it's subtle in that sense. It's very, very nice, very pleasant. You said it. Now, Maria. Okay. Well, right off the right off the top, I get a big scent of like soft brown bread, and then some rose petal. There's there's a beautiful um, scent of rose petal on this when you first pour it, and then the phenols kind of start to exude, and you smell a little clove, little earth, and a little of the hop. Spice. There are noble hops in here, and they have like a twinkling bit of spice. Mm-hmm. And if you can see that with your nose, then you'll also see that they're very firmly herbal, and there's plenty of them in this beer. They just don't step out, right? They're they're content to be in the background and and to let this malt show itself off. I think Eric had the um, the fruity scent on the nose just perfectly. It's like um. I would have said like golden raisin. It's almost raisin, but it's not quite dark enough. So I like what he said about the grape, the red grape. Uh, it's, a, yeah. it's a beautiful scent. And there is a light but firm ester from yeast, and that's banana. Hmm. I was kind of on the edge. I didn't want to say banana, but it kind of flew through my mind. I, it's, I not, it's definitely not a, a powerful flavor, but I did kind of... Notice that as well. Absolutely. Well, there's even there's even according to that big roasty scent that um that you that you smelled, um I would say that that is what is giving this tiny little dusting of what I'm going to call cocoa to the nose. But then that sort of becomes a little bit of nuttiness. This is a very complex malt, and I'm not smelling a whole lot of the sugar, just a faint sweetness like. I don't know, like butterfly wings, as far as sweetness goes on the nose. Just a gorgeous beer. It just yeah. it smells so good. It definitely has. To. Definitely what? Spiced fruit. That's yeah. what I'm like. <laughs> You're right. There's hey. also phenolic mm. spice on this beer, and I didn't say that at first because I wanted to. I wanted to show you how um, the the phenols will show you the hop because it's so perfectly balanced. But that spice from the phenols, that's a little bit different from the spice you'll smell from the hop. Well, yeah, I also noticed that when a beer has a little bit of a higher alcohol percentage, sometimes there can be a, 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 a it, it's different from it being a hop kind of a bitterness and the alcohol sometimes giving it a little bit of a different kind of a bitterness. I, I, don't, I wouldn't say to me personally that this beer has a really heavy boozy flavor, but since I've had it before, I can tell you definitively that maybe in 15 or 20 minutes, even with one of these 11.2 ounce bottles, you will feel that 7%, but you know, just the perception of 7% to me is nowhere felt in this beer when you drink it. 
Not Murray, no, none at all. None at no. all. We're about to get to the flavor. We're about to get to the flavor. I want to say one thing, though. Jean. Jean. Yes. Clap, clap on. Clap off. Mustache on. Mustache off. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> oh. It's gonna stay off. It's gonna stay off for a while. So it's our girl's back. <laughs> You're taking off, and I'm adding. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, Anyway, I just had to well, the only other thing I wanted to say is is that that spice that I'm trying to define that I really can't I think has also been called by by bros and other really good reviewers I think that's also been called estery or peppery alcohol and I don't know how they come up with that but I'm maybe just, it is the alcohol I'm that just brings that peppery of, peppery because of the spices that it uh, because of the spices yeah. in the beer. No, from my if you ask me, it's the stuff from the yeast, right? That okay. if it had gone off, it would be like band aids. But to me, that is making spice. It didn't go off, and it's not anything like band aids. It's like spice, but it's not hop. No. If you're looking for a hop bomb, you're gonna be so terribly disappointed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Now, now the flavor, Marilyn Jake. Oh yeah. Okay, Eric. No, <laughs> We've not eaten a band. We've not eaten a band aid either. Okay, Marilyn Jake, what do you think it tastes like? Go. I thought it had like a, a you know spice fruit with like maybe sugar, uh, clove maybe a little bit of clove. Um, I almost say it has sort of almost like a gummy flavor. You know, like a gummy bear. A yeah. little bit. It reminds me of another uh, like Belgian style beer I had that tasted like a gummy bear. A little bit. I know that sounds kind of weird, but <laughs> that that's what I get from it. Real sweet and uh, spice. Okay, um, that sounds that sounds actually correct to me. All right, Eric Anderson, you around? Yes. What does it taste like to you? I know what you're going to say, because I'm going to say the same thing. Well, like I said, um, it's definitely, a lot of the things that are there in the smell are definitely evident in the beer, which is not always the case, but I have found it to be the case in this particular beer. Um, I definitely almost, I mean, it's not it's not as fruit cakey as the smell is, but you definitely get a lot of those same elements, that slight spice fruit smell. You get that, um, like I said, I, I was kind of, I, I, I posted on there, almost like, I, it's difficult to put a finger on it, but I, I would kind of compare it to allspice. But that flavor is very, very um, mellow. It's a very subtle flavor there. Um, uh, you, so you get that slight, uh, uh, subtle flavor. You definitely, definitely get that slight, you know, the, the, the slightly roasted malts. You definitely get a little bit of that brown sugar. I think, I think they kind of put it on the nose with the, uh, the golden raisin, that kind of, uh, that fruit flavor. And I almost get, you know, um, there's a little bit of, uh, more of a cocoa flavor out of, uh, the taste and I do the smell. I think the uh, there's like a slight, um, very subtle uh, chocolateiness, uh, cocoa flavor, and uh, I mean Maria was talking about a, a kind of a nutty finish, which I was not able to really get out of the smell, but I could definitely uh, pull out of the taste. When you say well, co when you say cocoa, you're not talking about a, a sweet kind of a cocoa, are you? No, 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 no. I'm talking about the the dark, the bitter. The bitter oh, aspect. Yeah, okay. I, okay. I, I don't I don't play with that milk chocolate shit. All right, I'm I, I'm dark. <laughs> I'm say, I only eat that eighty percent of stuff. Seventy five. That black chocolate. Once you go black, you don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, dark beer for life. I'd so, say yeah, um, it's it's a little bit more mature and a little bit the the flavor is very uh similar to the to the uh, aroma, but it's a little little bit um, earthier, and you get a little bit more bitterness, which is uh, very different from the hoppy bitterness of, of like an IPA, uh, and uh, very very pleasant. Amen, brother. Now, Eric, on the East Coast. Um, 
what I'm getting out of the spear is is a, 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 like I said with the red grapes kind of a kind of a scent. I'm getting almost like a red wine. Uh, yes. Not, not, like, yes. Like, like a um like a big old chewy red wine in certain aspects. I'm I, I'm tasting that there's a yes. that there's a pretty malty thing going on with a underlying sweetness. The sweetness is not cloying whatsoever. I and I find actually that. That that the sweetness plays with the maltiness just perfectly. Again, there's that dark fruit and that red grape kind of a thing going on. I'm getting a tartness from the beer. I'm thinking it could be from the yeast strain, maybe. And the tartness to me ends up being a little bit sour, just a little bit before it ends up drying. And again, like I said a little bit earlier, I'm not feeling uh, I'm not getting a flavor of the boo of like a 7% alcohol but I've had the beer before and I know in about like 20 or 15 minutes you will start to feel that but I think everything's working harmoniously and it just comes out as a fantastic product overall yeah and uh and and Bryson <laughs> you know I couldn't agree uh, more with both uh, Eric's that were just talking uh, but just what Eric said uh, recently about the wine. As this beer has been warming up, just in the nose, though, just to mm -hmm. quickly mention, yes. I've been getting more and more of this wine aroma coming out, this red blend, red wine, just something in general with that. But then it also, as I drink it, it does follow through. It has this, uh, no, no one's mentioned it, but it has this prickliness when you drink it and this bitterness that go together, and it kind of just come together as one nice long finish and it really it finishes off the beer very nicely um, aside from everyone else that has talked on the notes as far as the the raisins the figs the you know the fruit cake uh, essence of this beer in some sense um, I, I get a lot of that um, I get those sweet malts that were mentioned I you know I get it's a very uh, it's a very balanced beer in that sense. I wasn't expecting it to have that bitterness, though, and that prickliness. Almost a champagne-like prickliness, but not quite. Um, I thought that was a very that was different uh, from a lot of other beers that I've had before. Um, so, And also the wine aspect of that is definitely different. Um, but yeah, so I, I really enjoy it. It's an excellent beer, in my opinion, and very well balanced, given the different uh, aspects of this uh, beer really pulls from. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, good descriptions. And um, John, what do you think? Because this is your first time too. Yeah, first time trying this beer. And when we did the blue uh, of Chimay, and when I bought this bottle, I kind of thought, you know, this is probably going to have a lot of, you know, this is going to be a full, full body, full punch beer. Because as I've always said in a lot of my reviews, you know, any beers made outside of the United States, you know, even the 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 alcohol that's involved in it, you feel that you're getting a more powerful beer. You know, so and I kind of thought with this, but so far it's been very enjoyable, very pleasant. I'm getting all those things, a little bit of that wine sort of taste, but it's not overly, you know, it's not overly doing it. Same uh, with the uh, sort of the all spices, the scent of it. But when you taste it, it's not overly, you know, com compounding or in this beer. So it's really going down very smooth, very easy, and um, the malt, the maltness, the, the the maltiness of this beer is probably one of the big plus of this that I like. Um, I think it's a very enjoyable beer to me. Okay, now Maria, you were drinking it earlier before we went on air, and you were having dinner with it. So I wanted to know if you could describe the flavor to us. In your view, and uh, and talk about the food pairing real fast. Well, sure. I went on to the to the Chimay website and I was looking up what they paired with um, with this beer, and they did rabbit in uh, beurre noisette, I think, um, mm. with some vegetables. So I had pot roast with vegetables in my refrigerator, and I thought, let me see if it will pair with this because the double is not something I have a lot of experience pairing, and it's wonderful. Um, it's wonderful with that I I made just a simple pot roast and you can find that recipe on my Facebook page. Um, like game, this was, any game, like, it's, it's kind of like you know game, like you know rabbit, game. deer yeah. meat, things like that, goat meat, you know. 
Right. Darker, darker, richer meats. Yes, exactly. And don't be afraid to put it with steak or stew. Venison tastes things tasty. when people think of beer, they only think of the of the AAL with uh, steak or with something, you know, red hearty and red meat, but you can put this beer with it. And and the sweetness, like you said, is not so much that it would detract. I thought this beer was perfectly balanced, followed the nose in every way. Um, I, as far as the flavors go, y'all nailed them. The only thing I could add is that, you know, this finish is absolutely perfect. It's a moderate dryness. It's moderately high carbonation, like you were saying. It's, it's um, just shy of effervescent. And because of that carbonation, um, this medium fullness that, that envelops your palate actually is reduced in the finish to, to a kind of lightness because of all those bubbles. And that's a main point of the style, is that the body of the beer seems to take on a lightness in the finish that you can't explain. And this one does it so well. I think that the cocoa, um, to my palate, is like the dry stuff that you're using to cook with that's unsweetened. It's just like a a light powdery thing on the tongue and then that gives way to like a bit of nuttiness. I, I really like this beer. I don't think the bitterness um, is, is inappropriate for the beer and except for the fact that it will dry the palate, you don't even notice it. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's not too heavy, is it? Not too heavy bodied. Mm -mm. It's no. a beautiful beer. All the Chimay beers are beautiful. You know, the other thing that I'm noticing out of this beer, and, and, and I believe I did mention it in the aroma, is maybe that's the whole wine aspect of the beer, but I am kind of getting almost woody kind of notes, like almost, not that it's barrel aged, but almost kind of a light woody note that you might get mm -hmm. in some kind of barrel aged kind of beers as well. Something yeah. like that. It's kind of a complex style. If you think of, if you keep sipping on the beer, you might keep getting whole new ideas of what the flavor really is. Okay, and um, almost like a ramen. Yeah, I would agree with that, Marilyn. A what? A what? Almost like a what? A rum-aged beer. That's what it sort of tastes like. Okay. Yeah, sort of, yeah. Rum-aged. I got you. Um, now, on Beer Advocate... Like there's innocent gun. Uh, I've had one of those. On Beer Advocate, they say it's outstanding. The bros say it's world class. And on Rape Beer, they say it's a 98 out of 100. And in the style, a double, it's a 100 out of a, a 100. Do you think it deserves such a high score? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Would you buy it again? Let's just finish this up because we've been on over 30 minutes. Would, would all of y'all buy this beer again? If I'm going to a dinner party, yeah, I would buy it. Uh, this, this will be for me personally in good old Mobile, Alabama. I will have to say, wait, Gene, why are you drinking this? What's this? Chimney beer or what is it? Yeah, no, yeah. Chimay. Chimay. Mm -hmm. yeah, if, I, if I brought this to a dinner party, people would get mad and ask me why I didn't bring Bud Light. But <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Yes. I, I, think, I think my friends kind of know me as a uh, – I don't want to say a snub, but they know me as the guy that go – that when we're at a concert, I'm going to the bar, and every time I go to the bar, I'm ordering a different beer because that's kind of what I want. And and Chimay beer to me is a different kind of beer for good reason. It's it's got tremendous flavors, tremendous complexity. It's not the most expensive beer in the market. It's not the most cheapest beer, and I can see why. And I think this would be a really good substitute as we were talking about the red wine. Four red wines when you want to drink a beer or you have this beer in hand and you maybe don't want a wine or you want a wine alternative for a pairing, I would definitely buy this beer again. No question about it. Now, uh, if there's – instead of everybody just saying blah, 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 let's make it simple. Would there be anybody on this group tonight that would not buy it again? I Personally, well, it's not my I style, mean, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy it again. Either. One at a time. What? Who's that saying? Uh, I personally wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't buy it again. Uh, it's not my style of beer, but it is. I mean, it's not a beer, and I can respect it for what it is. But to me, I mean, even the 98 that I got, I don't even know if I'd rate it that high. But it'd be in the world, you know, definitely be 90 plus worse. Uh, but I wouldn't buy it again. I I need to try the other Chimay's and get a real feel for this line. Uh, also, I guess at that point, so. 
I appreciate that honest answer. Now, um, well, this was really interesting. I don't know. What do y'all think? Do you think we should look at the Shimei White and the Shimei Dory, the gold? Let's do it. Come yeah. On. I, if I can find it. Yeah. You know, like I, said, I found the red and I found the blue. If I can find the other two. And um, sure, the why white, not? Yeah, the white should be easy, but the gold could be a problem. I know where I can find the, go the Dory, the gold. But that could be a problem for a lot of people. So we'll have to look at that a little more carefully. But the, I can't get the Dory. I don't have it. I have the white easily. Yeah, everybody can get the white. That's like common. That's the uh, that's the new one from like twenty something years ago. I uh, kind of want to do a beer review. Oh, on that's it. my birthday beer. Sang song. Nineteen sixty six. Sang Anderson. I almost want to do a review on the cheeses too. The Chimay cheeses. I know. I know where I can get wow. some of those. No joke. <laughs> no. Jesus, yeah, man. Birthday beer, Maria. That the year I was born. That's the year they came out with that beer. Oh, the longer. <laughs> oh, okay, 1966. I didn't realize it was. Oh, white, yeah. Wow, shows you what I know. Never mind. Disregard what I said, folks. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, what I find interesting about this beer is that it's very much not my type of beer. But I do really enjoy it, and I think like I, you know, it's the kind of thing that I would bring. Uh, you know, now on Sundays we do uh, Game of Thrones parties. Oh, Everyone yeah. like has a party oh, okay. to bring something Game of Thrones related, sort of. I think this would this would fit in. If I brought in a big bottle of uh, Chimay Red, I think everyone would be very that happy. Could about that. that could replace the Game of Thrones Oma Gang beers. Cough, cough. <laughs> I actually brought the uh, Three Eyed Raven on the last one, and honestly, I liked it. I liked that Three Eyed Raven. It was uh, Dark Saison. I thought it was a good beer. That's a different twist on the style. We better, we better avoid that because that could cause some like major mm -hmm. controversy that could yeah. drag this out. <laughs> now, uh, um, okay, so this beer was really interesting, and I, I just wanted to do it so bad. Next week is going to be a totally different item. Jamaica Mun. Yeah, or, or Pennsylvania, man. A troll, man. <laughs> uh, we're going to look at a beer that's going to anger some. It's going to make others say, I don't care either way. And then other people are going to be interested. It's Red Stripe. Oh, boy. Oh, Never boy. Had it. Since 1934, uh, they've been brewing it. It's now contract brewing in the United States. The Ambassador. <laughs> I would love to do Red Stripe Bold, 6%, but I would have to go to Kingston, Jamaica to get it. What's that effort? I don't uh, know. It's just developed, hasn't it? Uh, Is it gone? No. Hmm. So we've got Red Stripe next Monday night, folks. Monday night at 10 o'clock Eastern, so that's going to cause trouble for people joining... But um, I'm I'm interested in it. I would like to find the red stripe bold, like I said, but that ain't gonna happen. Um, that's a new one. It's Jean, yeah. Um, I would also like to tell people that next mm -hmm. week we're gonna the week after next we're gonna look at Spaten. I gotta make sure I get my bottle of Spaten. Talking about the regular 5.2%. Oh, that's a great beer. Spaten what? The regular Spaten what? The lager? Just the lager, yep. Yeah. Regular Spaten. Uh, then, hey, this is the truth. We had to. I deleted that video because of some situations, but um. Uh oh. Two Marias. Yeah, Maria. My phone box keeps crashing tonight. It's not my internet service provider. It's my Firefox that's crashing. Oh, that's a bad sign. Uh, Google Chrome. So we have Spotten on May 11th, and then we've right. got so we've got May. Second is Red Stripe. May 11th is Spaten, the regular one. May 18th. Okay, sit down before you. I say this. Make sure you're sitting. Sitting. Natty Daddy. Uh oh, no. Oh, can't get it. Can't yeah. get Natty Daddy anymore. Oh, it is. That one. Oh, oh, we're, doing, <laughs> we're doing the Natty Daddy again without our special friend there, right? You know, I might be able to find that. I think that's actually in like a garbage can looking 
cooler in the in the cold room of my grocery store. <laughs> we go from Shemay to Natty Daddy. Woo! Don't be mad at me because you don't. That's like how we do. Don't be mad at me because you can't handle Imperial Loggers. Um, Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> don't be mad at me because the White Sox. I'm just over there in Mobile, Alabama. Don't be mad at me because the White Sox. Don't be mad at me because the White Sox are in first place. Hey, um. <laughs> that, that's a surprise. That's a surprise right there. I figured KC would have run away with yeah, that division. You got that right. You got that right. Oh, and to close out the month of May. Yeah, brother. We got Bud Light Lime. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, oh no! Trying to start trouble, you are. Oh boy! Honest, I'm trying to cover all the things. I've used to snap lime freedom. I'm actually I've just seen I'm more Keystone trying. Light Lime than Bud Light Limes in this area. I've never heard of that beer, Keystone Light Lime. Never. Never. There's a Moosehead Lime. Eric Anderson, we're gonna have to do a Tilada on another night because people just won't go for it. Um, <laughs> you know, <Bob> me. <laughs> ain't doing it. Not doing it. <laughs> June first. That Budweiser clam juice, you know that's just gotta be good for you. Come on. It is. You gotta be scared of Budweiser clam juice. Okay, give up. Eric, just give up. <laughs> you can't win. You can't win. You can't win. All right. June first, we're gonna do Shemay White. That's the plan, Stan. Let's do it, son. So anyway, that's the schedule. It's it's not written in stone, but it's written on a little date book. Um, Works. So thank you so much, y'all, for joining. This was a great examination, I think. Yeah. If nothing else, if nothing else, branch out, try some other beers. If you can get a single, you know, bottle, that's probably the best way to try some of these beers instead of buying the big bottle and maybe being disappointed. Right. It's a beverage. Drink it. There's no reason to get uptight about it. It's interesting. It's fun. But you don't have to go berserk over it. Um, so, um, and I want to say one more thing, and then Maria's going to try to get me some mental health uh, assistance because, but I'm trying to get it started, okay? I'm not trying to um, go berserk. I'm just trying to, like, stick my toe in the swimming pool a little bit. Here's just something I'll throw out there for general principles. Um, if anybody, people are going to say, oh, my Lord. <laughs> if anybody wants to look at Brandy anytime, let me know, because I have, uh, okay, all right. I have. Mm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to stay off the hard liquor stuff, keeping simple to wine <laughs> and beer. Too I much trouble with hard know. liquor. Too much trouble. Let's put it that way. I'm I'm saying, what can we do next? Let's that, go to Brandy next. I understand that, and I totally agree, Jean. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I got this huge bottle of uh, Fleur de Napoleon, I mean, Fleur de Lis Napoleon French Brandy VVSOP. And I've got, <laughs> since I was, <laughs> well, since I was at the store and I was shopping, I bought this uh, Grand Amber Brandy VS. So, uh, you know, and, um, how much do those oh, yeah. put you back? It's not a sickness. Yeah, watch the review. <laughs> it's not a sickness. It's a hobby. See, that's how you can cover. Um, they didn't set me back. <laughs> Amen, brother. Well, you know, you know, I, I'm jocular a lot of times, and there's nothing wrong with jocular humor if you don't go overboard. But anyway, uh, no, they didn't cost me too much, uh, Eric. In fact, they were pretty inexpensive. Now they did have one. At the uh, Dorgnax, the San Rom, the San Remy, I think it was the number thirteen, and it was three thousand dollars for a seven hundred fifty milliliter oh. bottle. But I didn't buy it. But anyway, um, <laughs> what about that Pappy? What about that Pappy Van Winkle? I mean, that's like what, maybe two grand? I think for no, a no, no, no. I want that. maybe two hundred dollars or no. I, I I know where to get a bottle for ninety five bucks. I don't want to go with you. Oh, but. Pappy Van Winkle. Yes, because sir. there were some people here in Fairhope that were going crazy for that, for that, for that, uh, for that liquor. Uh, you do too. You have to like win it or get somebody to buy it for you because you just can't find it. It's Aaron probably has seven no bottles in his cellar. Unless you know me, <laughs> I know it. <laughs> you know me. Hey no, Jay, I'm, I'm not joking now. I was kidding about the hobby thing. Well, I mean it is a hobby, but I was kidding about. 
if you know me and you got 95 bucks plus tax, you can get your bottle of Pappy Van Winkle. That's all I'm going to say about it on here. Like right now. <laughs> now. You're going to have the, the mailbox will be full. <laughs> Jay, you're going to regret that you said it. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to regret it. And in fact, I know somebody that's going to be very happy about it. But anyway, um, but not me because I won't be making the money off of it. But anyway, any last any last words on this because we got to shut this off. Any last words on the uh, uh, Shimei premiere? Happy Van Winkle. Yeah, it's a decent beer and uh, may get it again. I really like it. The double is, is a house favorite. Uh, for me and my son, we both really like the double. Chimay makes two different ones, and they are different, the red and the blue. Try them both. I and, love and them what, both, and I and buy And what style two. is it again? What style is it again, guys? I forgot. Double. 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 Okay. D-U-B-B-E-L? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, I want to try all their cheeses, as you all know. I don't know where to find those cheeses. I do. I don't. I Don't you have to order those from them? No. No? You just got to come to New Orleans and go shopping with me. Get some Chimay cheese and some Peppy Van Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bragging. I'm just no, it sounds awesome down there. Let's do a Better review. It's the truth, yo. <laughs> hey. I don't know that we can all get Natty a National Bohemian in, in, around the country. Oh, no, I can't get it. No, no way. not Natty Bo, right? Natty Daddy. <laughs> yeah, Daddy is a national product. Natty Bo, I'm not driving to Matt, Matt. I know Marilyn Jake can get it. <laughs> yep. Not in Massachusetts. Anyway, enough of this. Uh, I can get it everywhere. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah, I hope, except for the Orioles ballpark. But anyway, um, <laughs> that's another story. Yep. Thank you all for watching this. The beer was awesome. The friendship was more awesomer. John, we're going to work on that little natty daddy problem. All right. Thanks, <laughs> folks. Thanks <laughs> folks for watching this video production. And you all come on down to California and Minnesota. And Louisiana and Alabama and Mississippi and New York and Maryland. And Massachusetts. Oh, yeah, Massachusetts. I thought I said, <laughs> oh, man, I didn't even start drinking the brandy Thank yet. Thank you. Good evening.